what's going on everybody this is DK Dynamite and tonight we're gonna be talking about everything yes plain and simple as you've seen the thumbnail of this video we're gonna be talking about everything to do with campaign multiplayer and zombies for Call of Duty Vanguard quite a bit of early information has been posted online regarding all of that so we're gonna safely break all of it down here tonight definitely stay tuned but before you jump into that be sure to hit that subscribe button down below and also as a reminder you can save 10% off any order using code dynamite over at gameradvantage.com but for the next two weeks I'll be playing with every single one of you guys out there this has me proof of using my code over at checkout. The link is, of course, down below in the description. Now, tomorrow is also the release of both the numbers of events for Cold War and Warzone and the Outbreak Survival LTN. A recent blog post confirms that all that content should be going live at around 12 p.m. Central, 1 o'clock Eastern, and I'll be going live a little bit before that to prepare with all you guys out there, setting up some open lobbies. If any changes are made to the time of release, I'll be putting a pinned comment down below, but I hope to see you guys there tomorrow. We'll be live for most of the day, completing as many challenges as we possibly can, and I hope you're still enjoying my coverage for Black Ops Cold War. There's still a lot left to release for the game, and I'm really excited about all of that. But as we transition into Call of Duty Vanguard, hopefully you guys are feeling a little bit more energetic about the game itself. I think energy about Vanguard has been low since even before the reveal of the game, which is unfortunate, but I hope to see a big turnaround before the game actually comes out because right now on YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, Reddit, people just aren't really too positive about the game. So let's see what happens. I know Sushammer is doing a great job lately with community feedback, getting rid of certain features, adding others, and I'm sure by the time the game does come out in November, the game should be as polished as it possibly can be. I'm not really a big fan of some of the design philosophy behind Vanguard Multiplayer. I felt stronger about the alpha, which is a bit strange, but I'm sure by the time the game comes out, multiplayer should be a little bit more polished. And I've really only been having a good time on Search and Destroy, not some of the other modes that have been in the game for a little while. Not a huge fan of the maps either, but again, just my opinion. Feel free to respectfully disagree or challenge that down below in the comments. And on top of that, I think what's not going to help Vanguard in terms of community energy and interest is the report that we got earlier this afternoon. So according to the Wall Street Journal, the SEC is now investigating Activision Blizzard over the allegations of sexual misconduct and workplace inequality. They also report that the SEC has subpoenaed Activision Blizzard CEO Bobby Kotick, along with other senior executives for their handling of recent allegations of sexual misconduct. So that's not good news at all, but I'll be keeping you guys posted with more updates on the story during the podcast this Friday, other videos in the future. What you're not supposed to do, though, after reading this is boycott the games that they publish and attack innocent developers over decisions and allegations that they have nothing to do with at all. That's just not the way to go about it. And let's not lead to more layoffs for innocent developers by boycotting games games that Activision does go ahead and publish, you know, the issue to begin with, according to legal paperwork, had to do with World of Warcraft and the Blizzard side of things, not even Call of Duty. So let's hopefully not see Call of Duty channels who post nothing but negativity uh, milk this topic day in and day out over something that isn't even related at all. So that's just my quick thought on that. And I also want to quickly mention that several, and I mean several, official Call of Duty partners affiliated with Activision have also touched on a lot of this rumored information that we're going to talk about here tonight. Should be safe to address. And I want to make that clear because I'm just the messenger. I just cover this game day in and day out. I enjoy grinding it, streaming it, making videos about it. Sometimes spicy information is a part of the news. And if Call of Duty partners have talked about it, then it should be safe for me as well. I've gone over this in the podcast already, but I just feel like I've been treated pretty unfairly over the past year about how information is distributed and which channels can and can't talk about certain things. It's an unfortunate double standard that many people might not understand, but it's really not just about me. It's about the principle and the bigger picture that I think I'll talk more about in a separate video in the future where I vent about my experience covering this game. But all that aside, when it comes to the campaign mission names for Call of Duty Vanguard, this is where things get fairly interesting. So these are based on real World War II locations and events. May not be the full list, but this is what's been found and posted thus far over on Reddit thanks to Nanakos who went in and organized everything for the upcoming Call of Duty. We have Numa Numa Trail, the Battle of El Alamein, probably said that wrong, the Battle of Midway, Phoenix, Stalingrad, the Fourth Reich, the Rats of Tobruk, Operation Tunga, Lady Night in Gale. So that is probably not the official list of campaign missions, but if it is, don't judge that based off the list of missions we have thus far. They could all be very long missions. They could all be very memorable. Don't forget, quality over quantity here. I say this with zombies all the time. I'd rather have a couple of very polished and uh, filled maps or missions in this case, instead of, you know, 10 to 20 more maps that are all vague, hollow, don't have much 
in them in terms of replayability. That's the way I look at quality over quantity with the Call of Duty franchise. And we already got gameplay of... I think one of the missions taking place in Stalingrad for the upcoming campaign. So that's probably what the Stalingrad mission is as listed here on Reddit. When it comes to multiplayer, the current list of the 20 multiplayer maps is as follows. We have Berlin, Basin, Bacaj, uh, Casablanca, Castle World at War Remake, CPZOD, which is being referenced as War of the Dead, the first zombies experience for Vanguard, but it's unclear if that's its own round-based map, if that's a bit of a bonus experience like Onslaught, but we'll list that there. Doss House, uh, Demon Yak, I'm saying this horribly wrong, I already know, so excuse me in the comments. Dome, the World at War remake. Desert Siege, Factory, Gavutu, Gavutu 2, which could be a nighttime variant, as he suggested. We've seen a couple of those in some previous Call of Duties. Hotel Royale, Numa, Numa Numa again, no clue what the deals with that name at all, as listed here on Reddit. Oasis, potential Modern Warfare 3 remastered map. Paradise, Red Star, Shipment, and yes, it's probably the same shipment that we had in World War II 2017. We have Subpen, so this could be a remake from World at War yet again. We then have Tuscan, Airstrip, Train Yard, Courtyard, and Market. The last four maps I just listed are for Champion Hill, of course, and I'm sure more Champion Hill maps will be introduced over the course of the DLC cycle, but those are the list of maps that we have as of right now. Other new multiplayer game modes do include the following. So, these game mode streams were found in the presence table as he wrote on Reddit, and what shows up is when you look on a friends list and it says that that player is playing XXX mode. So, right now it's Arms Race, Control, Crawl, Minefield, and Patrol. Now, Minefield doesn't have a description behind it. It says, players drop lethal mines on death. That sounds pretty interesting, but that's the list of mode aside from the modes we already have in the Vanguard beta. But again, it's not the final list. I'm sure more modes will also be confirmed before the game officially launches. Now, when it comes to kill streaks, it does say some other unreleased kill streaks that we should see in the final game are as follows. Aside from the list we already have in the beta, we have Air Superiority, performs three strafing runs across automatically targeted areas on the map. All active air streaks are removed and cannot be spawned during the lifetime of this streak. We then have local informants, reveals the location and direction of all enemies on the map for a period of time. So it's like a harp, but for Vanguard, of course, over in the Second World War. When it comes to launch weapons, this is crazy. There are apparently 40 weapons in total, and he's linked a paste bin that includes every single weapon for launch, as well as the in-game description of said weapons. I'll have this paste bin link down below in the description. I mean, there are quite a few weapons here. We have assault rifles, we have SMGs, shotguns, snipers, pistols, everything you could think of. I think this video is going to be way over 20 minutes long if I go over all of that, so I will just have that link down below. And of course, 40 weapons at launch is quite a bit, so expect lots of replayability when it comes to going for mastery camels, calling cards, other in-game challenges. This game is going to be stacked. It's going to be one of the most stacked Call of Duties, at least right away at launch, in comparison to previous CODs that have come out from other developers. Now, we do have six additional operators coming to the full launch of Vanguard that is separate from the list we already have in the beta right now, and each operator comes with his or hers own execution weapon as well. So we have Beatrice in the French coming with a cleaver. We have Constanz, who is Latin, coming with a club. We then have Solange, who is French and Latin, coming with an axe. We then have Shigenori, Japanese, coming with a katana. We then have Pada Mavati, who is Hindi, coming with a machete. And lastly, we have Halima, who is Arabic, coming with a bailo, baile, probably said that wrong. But those are the ones we know that are coming at launch. But there are some other operators known as Louis, Francis, Isabella, and Lou, or Lee. And from what Nanakos has found, there are missing things like execution. So they could end up being operators that we see season one or season two, maybe even at some point after that. But right now it's unclear. We also have some more customization features that may be leftover assets from previous Call of Duties or are returning features in Vanguard, which include custom clan tag, calling cards, calling card frames, which I'm assuming is going to be the filler content for Vanguard, similar to pistol grips back from World War II. We then have player titles, emblems, gestures, sprays, reacts, and even Kill cam. So that's to do with customization across all the modes that will be a part of Vanguard and even features that we might end up seeing in Warzone, possibly even zombies. Now when it comes to zombies, the first experience for Vanguard zombies is being called War of the Dead. Now we're not sure if that's the first round-based map or if that's an experience that'll be on disc that is being rumored to be some type of
type of hybrid between Onslaught, Outbreak, and Round Base. We're not sure what it is, but perks have been renamed to Demonic Fountains. Field upgrades from Cold War have been renamed to Artifacts and will include Ether Shroud, Energy Mine, Ring of Fire, and Frost Blast. The Pack a Punch system from Cold War is also returning, so the three tiers we all know as of now. Armor system from Cold War appears to also be returning, along with the crafting system that we use to build equipment and other lethal and tactical items that we have in our inventory. We then have hit markers and damage numbers that are returning from Cold War, along with a new feature called Sacrificial Hearts. No details on this just yet. A new feature also called Covenant. Alien Covenant, anybody? <laughs> a quick reference there. Appears to be accessible in-game via a menu where you can select and equip them. They appear to range from level 1 to 3, and it seems you can equip a minimum of 3. Given a Covenant is an agreement, it may be a mission challenge order system of sorts. More replayability to really drastically change how Vanguard Zombies works, as opposed to Cold War Zombies, which is also being developed by Treyarch. Now, it's worth pointing out that Army of the Dead may in fact be the name of the first round base map, but achievements were found for Army of the Dead. So, looking at how Cold War war works we didn't have achievements for any zombies maps aside from demachina and dead ops k3 so unless they're going to change how achievements work for the dlc season of vanguard zombies then if army of the achievements do exist is that going to be at launch it's unclear the mono over two ghosts also found references to cpzod which does stand for zombies on disc and we know zombies on disc for black ops 4 was for example voyage of despair for black ops 3 it was shadows of evil so what i'm assuming right now is maybe zombies on disc some type of hybrid experience that they're going to give us right away on launch, but then the first Zombies map, Army of the Dead, will come with its own achievements during Season 1. That's the current rumor that we know of as of right now. That, of course, subject to change. I'll keep you guys posted with any other information that is posted about that. But the achievements for Zombies are as follows. Baker's Dozen, War of the Dead, Sacrifice 13 Hearts, as cold as ice in War of the Dead, eliminate 10 zombies via melee that have been slowed by the Frost Blast artifact. Deal with the Devil in War of the Dead, equip 3 Covenants. Death Dealer in War of the Dead, eliminate 2,500 enemies with a Pack-a-Punch level 3 weapon. Escape Artist in War of the Dead, while using the Ether Shroud artifact, enter the Ether Shroud 5 times with less than 25% health left. Grim Reaper in War of the Dead, eliminate 10,000 zombies. Hot Tempered, eliminate 10 zombies that are taking damage from the Ring of Fire artifact. Shocking Behavior in War of the Dead, eliminate 10 zombies that were damaged by the Energy Mine artifact. And Thirst Quencher, drink from all five demonic fountains in a single session for War of the Dead. So that sounds crazy. I'm getting vibes here of World War II zombies and then a bit of how the gameplay works from Cold War. I'm really excited about this. We're gonna be getting our official Vanguard Zombies reveal close to the Hallows Eve event towards the end of October, which probably also after the launch of DLC 4, the final round base map for Black Ops Cold War. Now last and definitely least, I wanted to point out something that I find to be very comedic and I'm sure you guys will as well if you are a positive person on the internet. But remember the whole debate between Vanguard and Battlefield, which game's gonna kill which? You know, that's been something I've been hearing for the past 10 years, and neither game has killed one another, right? Each game is doing its own thing. They're apples and oranges, at least the way I see it. But it's funny how the conversation went from Vanguard's doing so poor behind the scenes, development is fucked, the game's been released broken, COD's dead, Battlefield's ahead, Battlefield's gonna kill Vanguard this year, it's all about Battlefield now, look what they're doing. But look what's going on, right? Vanguard seems to be ahead of the game. A lot of content is releasing on day one, whereas Battlefield got delayed. Development for that game's not doing well. The beta even got pushed back. So look how the tides have turned. And all in all, right, we have Call of Duty Vanguard releasing with campaign multiplayer zombies, then a massive Warzone integration just a little bit after that. Battlefield's launching with just a fully focused on multiplayer, a specialist stories type of vibe going with that. A lot of features that are gonna be missing from the game at launch as well. So it's again, apples and oranges, who cares? Play what you enjoy. If you're tired of one of the franchises, put it down for a while, try it again later. Just stop spreading negativity on the internet. Stop sending hate to developers. It does nothing constructive or positive for any developers or publishers involved in producing those franchises. I also wanna quickly mention that there's been some fake news going around regarding the anti-cheat in the Vanguard beta. People have claimed that Activision's new anti-cheat that they've been promoting has already been breached with the current beta. That's just not true. The new anti-cheat is not launching until November 23rd, season one of Vanguard, alongside the brand new Pacific Warzone experience. Right, the new anti-cheat is not live with the beta right now, and according to insider Tom Henderson, the Vanguard beta is currently using the same anti-cheat that's in Warzone right now, which got breached months ago. So people are just freely hacking their way into Vanguard multiplayer and ruining people's day. So that's what's going on with that. The full anti-cheat doesn't actually release until later in November. But that is about it. This has been 
DK Dynamite. Leave our thoughts down below in the comment section. What are your thoughts on everything we went over in regards to what we know so far about campaign, multiplayer, and zombies for Call of Duty Vanguard? Just about everything is out there, and it almost seems like marketing is practically void since curious folks out there with $700 computers have gone ahead and found everything and posted it on the internet before Activision could. So it's pretty silly how that happened. It was a little iffy with Cold War as well, where information was being posted a little bit early online, but it was severe with Modern Warfare, and it's severe now. So let's see how this impacts the Call of Duty franchise going forward. Really hope you've enjoyed, and see you in the gameplay stream tomorrow.